Hi everybody, welcome back to the cabin. I've got a lot of questions in the last few videos. Well, first of all, um, I don't know, a month or two ago, month and a half ago maybe, I was milling logs, a bunch of big maple trees and birch and a whole bunch of other things into planks that I could use to clad the um, new buildings, the workshop and the cellar and a few other things, floors and stuff like that. So I've got a whole stack of wood now, like that high so far, and I have a lot more to mill. So uh, maybe in this video what I'll do is I'll set up the mill in, in this new location and uh, mill this, this uh, ash log right here. Um, so one of the other questions I've been getting though is how we got the two massive ash logs into the foundation of the building beside the pond. And um, they were, really are. So I just use the online l uh, lumber calculator for weight. And uh, that log being about 26 feet long, the bigger one, and uh, over 12 inches in diameter, that thing uh, figured weighed over a thousand pounds. The other one was probably similar uh, because it was more green, uh, fresher, so equally heavy, I would say. So a couple thousand pound logs. And the way we moved them is that obviously I couldn't pull those out of the bush myself. They were back in the forest. Um, one of them was a dead standing. That great big one was dead standing, and it was actually right here in a spot. And you've seen me, you saw me take one down next to it a couple of years ago in the winter that I cut um, actually into the um, boards that I used for the, the live edge boards that I used for the stairs going up to the loft. So right next to that one was another dead tree. I thought they were both killed by lightning because there was a big uh, balsam fir, I think it was, that a, or a hemlock that was hit by lightning right next to it and exploded. So this other ash tree was that great big massive one. So when we dug the pond, when my neighbor dug it with the heavy equipment, um, he took that tree out and then I had to pull it out of the bush. And then the other ones were all these other ash logs I've been pulling. Oh, and the, and the other one there was from the logs that we cut down last year for the longhouse to get the bark off of them. So I'm finally getting them out of the bush and getting them to use. Um, so, like I said, the, obviously I can't uh, handle those on my own and uh, without power equipment. So what we did is a um, really good friend of mine, uh, and I haven't seen this friend in 12 or 13 years at least, uh, he actually came up. So we uh, reconnected and... and uh, he finally got him up here to see the cabin and spend a couple of days with me here. So what we did is pulled these logs out of the bush with a side, a Honda side-by-side, -side, a Pioneer 500. And it was amazing to see that with the winch on the front at first to get them out of the tough spots in the low areas. And then turning around just hooking uh, this strap actually. This strap up to the hitch of the, uh, of the back of the four-wheeler. We were able to walk that back from way back in the bush all the way to the to the pond area so very effective hard work mind you like there's a lot of dragging and what by hand and just remaneuvering around trees and stuff as we pulled the logs out but it worked it worked fine so i'm going to try to do is get the rest of them out before winter and um, i don't know if we'll, some of those might be easier to skid out when there's snow on the ground so using the snowmobile not sure but you know, i'll go over this system how we did it exactly with this cone and then I'll fire up the uh, mill. I'll oh, move the mill into this place with the four-wheeler as well which is kind of cool. Um, so we'll, I'll mill up a couple of logs I think and and uh, get these ash boards ready for use. Um, a couple other things uh, with my friend he brought me up some more bear meat which I really appreciate you know how much I love bear meat and um, some uh, arrows that he made with uh, turkey feathers from a turkey shot in the spring and then some ash shafts and some old traditional broadheads that um, we used, well they've been around for a long time and I used to use a lot 20 30 years ago so I'll show you that and uh, um, yeah that, that's probably going to be the most of what happens in this video just looking over my shoulder over the camera shoulder here and I see a an edible mushroom that um, I was waiting for those to pop up it's usually later in the in the fall or really late summer but it looks like they're starting to come up. It's been a really good year for mushrooms, so not all that surprised to see it. Um, I'll show you that later too. Maybe I'll cook that up into a nice meal this afternoon with the bear steak. Beautiful. Just 
pinch those off. So that's uh, like, uh, what is it, um, Lactarius deliciosos, I think. So that's a uh, that's um, milk cap. So this skidding cone kind of saved the uh, day, I would say. I'm not sure we could have pulled these heavy logs out without it. Uh, what that does, basically, as you can see, it kind of creates a torpedo front on it so that it doesn't catch on things. The front of the log, without something like that, just digs into the ground, catches on roots, catches on trees as you go by, where this just deflects the uh, butt end or the nose of the log around everything. So come up against a tree, it just bounces off and then repositions itself. I'm not sure, this is probably a five, 600 pound log, I would say, right here. Uh, believe it or not, that's solid, heavy ash. Like, in fact, too big maybe even for the mill and the way I've got it uh, set up right now. Um, so I might have to put an extension on the mill and then see if I can get this made into uh, either floorboards or, or um, like a flooring, nice hardwood flooring, or what else was I thinking? Hardwood uh, siding for the side of the building. But maybe I'll mill this short one up first so they can use that thing was so heavy I had to cut the end off of it. We had to get it into that length because we just could not move that log with that still attached to it. It's just way too big and heavy. Getting a lot of questions about the pond, whether it will ever clear up. And I see <laughs> It's starting to clear up, or as you can see, you can you know, it's starting to clear up in spots now. You can actually see down maybe a foot, which was better than when it was first filling up. Um, after a heavy rain, it still gets cloudy again as the uh, clay and the mud uh, washes in. That is the way it's filling. It's just from rainfall. But as you can see, Callie's swimming everywhere, and you can actually see her body underwater, which is cool. The arrows that I was talking about, which are very, very nice looking arrows too. Nice stain on them. That's uh, very similar to the ones that I make at the uh, ass shaft. I'm not sure where he, if he bought these shafts or if he made them. I had made a jig years ago uh, for a router. A couple of holes in a uh, little blocks of wood that you, with a uh, a bigger hole on this end and a hole about this diameter on the other end and I'd put it onto a drill, a cordless drill and spin the arrow and then run it in past the spinning rotor bit, straight rotor bit and it would shave it down to this size and thickness thickness and roundness and then just cut off the ends. So it was very effective actually. Um, now I typically just make them on the draw uh, well, I split them into smaller pieces and then um, shape them on the shave horse here and then straighten them out where in the past I just used a did I have a bandsaw or a table saw I ripped them into squares just a little bit bigger than that diameter but in the, when you do that you end up cutting across the grain so they're stronger if you can split them out of the piece of wood so that you don't get any grain tear out here but these are really actually high quality. There isn't much of that. It really does, for the most part, stick with the grain. Well made. Awesome. Anyway, he uh, <laughs> wants to keep his privacy, so I'm not even going to mention his name. But he's definitely uh, one of my best friends and has been for, what, 30 years now, I guess. Yeah, 31 years. Even though we went our separate ways for a while while we were raising our families. So. Uh, Never forgot about each other and we're able to reconnect lately and we're going to spend a lot more time together especially during hunting seasons coming up this fall and probably next spring